Hello, my name is Chris Kurzik, and I'm the Principal Engineer at Athabasca Engineering Solutions, AES for short. And uh, what does AES do? Well, first of all, we provide third-party value evaluations. We provide training and certification. We provide equipment re-rating. Welcome back, folks. We're going to look at ASME PT b-4 2013 edition and in this example we're going to be looking at a, uh, a circ weld um, a, between a shell and a hemispherical hit and uh, it's going to be a non-destructive uh, examination requirements as per section 8 division 1 so let's let's dive into this and and i've uh, increased the scope of this um, example so and expanded on it with more commentary. ASME allows a couple of different methods. The, the first method is you know straight from Section 8 Division 1 and that's utilizing UG um, um, and the UW and so on the procedures built within Section 8 Division 1 which is where you know 99% of the time is where you'll end up being. And then you can use utilize the practices as method two as an alternative, ASME allows you to, uh, based on code case 2695. And uh, basically in a nutshell, it allows you to use division two part four, which is you know, designed by rules. Uh, but you need to use Section 8.1 allowable stresses. Now, there's actually a few more uh, issues to consider, and, and I'll go over those uh, later on in this um, presentation. Uh, it, but it's very specific to that circ weld between the hemispherical head and the shell. So let's dive into the first one, method one. So as as usual, I've prepared a table and, you know, we're looking at, um, you know, method one and it's a post 99 design. We have a material which is, you know, a SA 516 grade 70, which is a, a very tough material, normalized minus 40 impact uh, temperature. We're, we're joining a hemispherical head and it's a vertical vessel and the diameter is shown and, and so on. And the, the properties that we're, we're not in this particular example, ASME doesn't get into the liquid head and this, and the, you know, um, those issues, you know, which would otherwise increase the, the, the pressure requirements, but we, we need these values so that we can do our analysis. Um, so the pressure and the design temperature, and you know the joint category. So in this example, um, we're going to be looking at uh, option one, which is a joint efficiency of 1.0 shown here, and, and it's and basically you're using full RT. And the other option is we would use spot RT. So as per UW11, uh, this would be 0.85 for spot and one for full RT. So basically, we go into section uh, 2D1A, and we just look up the, the temperature, uh, which is 150 centigrade, and we determine that the allowable stress is 138 megapascals. So, and we continue. Now, let's look a little bit more deeply at section 8, division 1 full RT requirements. So there, there's quite a few clauses. I mean, the, the, the big essential clauses is, is you, you need to do full RT if you're, you know, lethal service kind of situation, or if, you're, if your shell to head butt well thickness is greater than one and a half inches. And there's also some clauses within UC 57 that we'll go over uh, with there. And the other one, it has to do UW11, uh, has to do with intersecting wells. So, so if you have 
you know, um, a category A and a category B weld and there's an intersection, there's specific, there's specific rules that need to be followed for that one. Okay, so let's continue. So, and, so this is specific to this one. So you can see here, um, you know, there's UCS 57. We're gonna look more at this one, but there's also, you know, these other ones are for, you know, stainless steel and alloys. And so the different types of material classes and, and down here is more to do with, you know, the, the procedures for doing the, the radiography. So let, let's continue. So you see 57 over here is, um, there's, a, there's a clause in here and basically you, we have uh, A, 516 grade 70 N is considered a P1 material. So they say that by rule that if you are, um, you know, at 32 millimeters or one and a quarter inch or thicker, you need to do full RT. Okay, so we're going to go into uh, more details here. Preliminary calculations so we can set things up. So we, we plugged our uh, allowable stress from our previous slide is 20,000. And then we calculate our radius for our hemispherical head. And it's quite simple, the head, because there's only one, one diameter. And so that's what DI is. And of course, we have to take the corroded thickness. So therefore, we have to add on the, the thickness to get the final thickness. So we have the full uh, RT, uh, which is option one we talked about earlier, but we need to do a few checks. So check number one is we need to make sure that the thickness is equal or less than uh, a quarter of the inside diameter. And, and if that's the case, then that's a, um, a valid equation by UG27C1. And the second check check is it has to do with the pressure has to be less than uh, 0.385 times se and the, this has to these equations uh, are are to validate whether uh, thin wall or thick wall um, theory applies in this case um, you know our 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 diameter ratio and our pressures are within line. So we're, we're, go, we're good to go with the use of this thickness equation. So we, we do the math, we plug in the pressure, the, um, the radius and the pressure and the, and the respective uh, joint efficiency and the allowable stresses. And we calculate 1.16 millimeters of 28 or oh, sorry, 1.16 inches or 28 millimeters. And then we adjust for the corrosion allowance and we get basically 32 millimeters. So the second method, uh, we, we, we use the same equation, but our joint efficiency down here is higher. So we would expect our thickness to get thicker, and it does. And uh, we still do the checks, and you can automate that, and it's like like what I've done. And you can find out that your your required thickness now is if you do spot radiography, is now uh, 1.443, and, that, and that's because we're using a 0.85 joint efficiency. And because of UCS 57, which we talked about earlier, if your, your thickness ex, uh, succeeds this, because then you, you need to do RT. So at the end of the day, uh, spot RT is really, really not going to be allowed. But you, um, well, like spot RT is not going to be allowed, but you can still reduce your thickness. But, um, you know, uh, there's no, it's kind of a mute on this case. So let's take a look to summarize that comparison. So option one is full radiography. 
we ended up with 32 millimeters. And remember, this is just for a category A circumferential weld, right? And so each step you need to go and like for the category B and C, you have to go through by procedure and there's different sets of equations, but, but, the, but the process is the same, right? And then here is option two with the spot radiography. We need a thicker plate, okay? And we can reduce the materials by 14% if we use you know full uh full radiography so there is some advantages and, and we basically have to anyways because of ucs uh, 57. and uh you know again you need to consider the other well joint categories when making your final uh, analysis so we're going to continue on so we we, we looked at method one, and now we're going to dive into method two, and we're going we're to look at that. So basically, uh, there is an, an, if you go into ASME code case 2695, uh, there's some general rules. Basically, just like as we said, the allowable stresses you got to use, you know, um, section A, Division One, for the joint efficiency, you got to use uh, UW11 and 12, and the impact exemptions you should be using Section 8, Division One. But let's dive into that because they have a little bit more to say when you have butt welds uh, in the shell or the or the head, and this is not. Um, there's other rules for the actual nozzles. Okay. So we're going to continue. So basically here are some of the other rules and, and you, need, you need to review that, but this is just gives you a bit of a heads up where we are. So, you know, your material impact exemptions, you need to follow you, uh, division one, the joint efficiency. Uh, we, we use, um, that, um, Division one for material impact exemptions, we need to use the they require the coincident ratio, the thickness coincident ratio to be followed. Uh, Section eight, division two, which is pretty darn close. Uh, and I have we have some other videos on division two impact testing requirements, and uh, we have fatigue analysis. And basically, you have to use. You know, if you have that issue, you have to use division two, unless there's a go to division one first of all and look at UG22. Um, there's some exceptions there, and basically they uh, design by analysis, which is part five, is not permitted. Now, design loads and load case combinations, as discussed in part five, it's not required because. Uh, load case combinations are more characteristic of division two alternative rules. Then we have a primary stress check and it's not required. We have joint details. Uh, part four, section 4.2, you need to follow uh, division two. And, and we're going to do some videos on that later if you would like. And basically, um, the, the one of the big difference, the, the well joints are, are most of them are, are quite similar, but you need to be careful. But there's all, there's radius requirements on the inside radius, which seems to be, they're very specific about those kind of issues. And the fabrication tolerances. Now, so now when you evoke 2695, um, you have to make sure that um, the shop you're working with uh, is, you know, registered for, you know, division two. And, and they're familiar with these tolerances. And uh, please look at, you know, uh, four, three and four, four, because there's also some exceptions on, I think it's the outside diameter. So, um, you know, another reason why, uh, you know, maybe you wouldn't, you wouldn't be doing that. Um, but if you, if you decide that, you would need to discuss that with your fabricator. So let's start diving into this. So we're going to set up the equation. This is the cylindrical shells, the circumferential stress. We calculate that to be 60 inches. And uh, we're going to use the, the equation. 
in in part four, the by rules. And so for option one, RT, recall that we have to use division one E's uh, to calculate the thickness and, and the allowable stress. And we use equation 433. We calculate at the end of the day uh, with the corrosion allowance, um, 1.237 or 31.4 millimeters. So we continue look at spot RT and we go through the same process but recall that E now is 0.85 so we'd expect that the thickness to be higher with spot RT and it is and it's uh, 1.438 which is pretty much the same as as the division one and it's because the allowable you have to use the same allowable stresses right so um, my interpretation of the rules is, is that UW 11 and 12 uh, is, it, you, it says earlier that in a code case, if um, you, you have to use UW 11 and 12, so that means that the UCS thickness applies. So what are, let's look at the uh, method two comparison. So option one, radiography. Uh, we ended up with 31.4 millimeters for category A weld and 36.5. We had a 14% reduction, so we'd recommend that. Uh, and, you know, because of this requirement, uh, we have to do full RT. And uh, we need to also consider the other joint categories, just like before. I hope that you found this presentation useful and valuable to you. This was provided by Athabasca Engineering Solutions. We'd love to hear your feedback and, and your thoughts on further videos. And we'd love to hear from you. Maybe we can do some business. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss a thing. Take care for now.